Hello everyone, <laughs> welcome to the presentation from Andrew Scully. He is the CEO of Imagine and today he will tell us about their interesting new OLED technology for VR and AR. So Andrew, over to you. Thank you very much, Christoph, and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, Imagine is a uh, company that works on micro displays, and I'll talk about that in uh, in a moment. Let's see. Okay, there it is. So I'm the chief executive officer. We're going to talk about AR VR displays. And as you can see, this uh, there's a range of AR VR devices, all use near eye displays. The ones on the left are for uh, data glasses, and the, the idea is to make them look like real glasses. The ones on the right are immersive VR, and they all, they all use near-eye displays. And the ones in the middle are an attempt at making immersive AR glasses. And we'll talk about all of this and what kind of displays that you need for it. This next chart, there, there it is. The next chart uh, tells, answers the question, why should the display companies be interested in AR, VR? And this is from uh, the display supply chain uh, group. The chart on the bottom right shows you what the display revenue by headset type will be, according to this estimate. I might note that the, this chart excludes wearable monitor HMDs, and the easiest one is uh, one you might know is Google Glass. It's not a see-through, it's not an immersive VR, so those are excluded from this. But even so, in 2026, the projection is that this will be a $4.2 billion display business. And why is Imagine interested in it is because the chart on the left shows what percentage will be made up of what type of display. And if I go all the way to 2026, I'll see that the green is the biggest, and that green is uh, is micro OLED displays or OLED displays on silicon wafers, which is what we do. And the other larger one, and that's about 50%, the other larger one is the gray, and that's actually uh, normal LCDs that we, you would use for uh, cell phones or watches, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, uh, the attempt has to be to make it high resolution. So those are the two dominant ones. The other ones like uh, uh, regular OLED displays are being displaced by LCDs today, and that is uh, like cell phone OLED displays, and I can explain why. And then the uh, micro LED, inorganic LED, is very small going out there because the uh, estimate says that those will not be in mass production for a while. So again, $4.2 billion, that's a big number in 2026. And half of it by units is uh, micro displays using OLED technology on silicon. Here we're, uh, we're talking about uh, things like AR and VR for, and it's split between commercial and consumer. The blue is commercial, the orange is consumer. The uh, top slides are the AR market. And you can see from the AR market that in 2024, now remember this one includes the wearable displays like Google Glass, etc. In 2024, this market is dominated on the AR side by the uh, commercial market. You can imagine that. It's uh, 17 million units approximately, and the consumer is about 3 million, so 20 million units overall. Still a big market for us. And the VR, however, is more equally split between the two. It's uh, essentially 13 and 12 million for commercial and consumer respectively. And therefore the total market is uh, 25 million. And you might ask, well, why do I want an AR device for a commercial market? Well, on the left, we say equipment repair. So if you're a minor a mining re equipment repairer and you are, work for Caterpillar Tractor or something like that, you have to be in the in the site in one day. And then when you're there, if you don't know how to repair it, if you're wearing an AR headset and the person back at the main office, the engineer can also see what it is you're looking at, that person can point in your view to things that you 